Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. I recently noticed my Peter's Banded Skink Shukaku, who you see here, trying to climb, which you see here. I have never been 100% thrilled with the branches I put in Shoes Enclosure to begin with. I'll leave a link on screen for what the enclosure looked like previously, although you can see it here. So I replaced them with something that Shu might have an easier time climbing. I made some other changes too, so I decided to film it as a time lapse. Let's get into it. First though, make sure you're subscribed and you've hit that like button. Let's begin. So Shukaku lives in a 36 by 18 by 18 exoterra with a universal rocks background and side pieces and ledges purchased from custom reptile habitats, who I have an affiliate link with and I'll leave that down below. The hide on the ground is also from there. Here you can see me removing the weathered manzanita branches, shoes hide, and spot cleaning the surface of the sand for poops and shed and things like that. I'll be doing a partial substrate change today and I'll be adding organic topsoil and cocoa fiber blended with new sand into the enclosure. I really want to try a blend with shoe because I am not a big fan of how dusty sand can be alone, but the majority of care guides online for this species say to use 100% washed play sand for the substrate. So that is what I went with originally as I was new to keeping this species when I got shoe in April of 2021. To be honest, in all of my enclosures, I prefer a substrate blend, so this was a long time coming. And speaking of Shukaku, look who finally was like, okay, mother, really? You are destroying my home? What is going on? So this is Shukaku, my Peter's Banded Skink, and I will leave a video on screen linked in the cards and also leave down below a video where you can learn all about the different skinks that I have and their backstories, and Shukaku is one of them. So of course, I gently placed Shukaku into a temporary holding bin. In all, it took less than an hour to do these changes to the enclosure, so Shukaku wasn't out for very long, although they were not happy about it either, which I understand. So here I am adding the substrate. It goes in pretty damp, but not so much that it would squeeze out water. I put it in damp because the sand is dry and once a week I moisten part of Shu's substrate. So I just waited for that time of the week and counted this as the moistening. Shukaku has pretty high heat, so the substrate dries out quickly and as is the case with most reptiles, it's important to have a damp burrow. I wanted to address that because I think it's a common misconception that arid species don't need humidity. And as is the case with most arid species, Peter's banded skinks do benefit from having humidity in their enclosure, more so in the substrate than the air. Like you wanna make sure they have like a damp burrow somewhere to go and seek out if they want to have higher humidity. Blending this substrate is a serious arm workout because substrate is heavy on its own, but then when it's moist, it's heavier, and that is especially the case for sand. In fact, my glove broke, so I had to switch the one that was on my left hand onto my right hand so I could continue mixing. This is a little bit of a spoiler, but I really like this blend, and I think I'm going to be adding more organic topsoil and cocoa fiber into the mix of sand in the near future. So next up, I have this rock I purchased recently from Custom Reptile Habitats. You'll see it on screen in a minute. It's really cool. It's like a faux rock, but it has rocks like in the top of it. So it's like nice and heavy and weighted and sits down like a little cave. And then like to make it look like a cave, I cut an entrance hole like you see on my other one. I wanted to have it look like it was an actual cave with an entrance hole. So I decided to cut it. And as you can see, that did not work with scissors. It broke them. Honestly, it was a bit of deja vu because I think I've actually done this before, like breaking scissors while cutting these, so I should have just known better, but I completely forgot. But I did have success cutting the entrance hole with an X-Acto knife or X-Acto blade. I think anything that's like a sharp single blade like that would work well. Now this rock looks super fresh compared to the background and the hide and everything because it's new. So I decided to give it a good sand scrubbing, which is basically where I took dry sand and just kind of rubbed all into it. So it would fill in some of the spaces and make it look kind of dried out like all of the other pieces of rock in the enclosure that have been covered with sand thanks to Shukaku. After placing both of the hides, I then placed cork rounds. I wanted to make the ledges more accessible because Peter's Banded Skinks aren't really good climbers to begin with, so in order to give more of that enrichment and have access to the levels on the background and the ledges on the side of the enclosure, I was like, let's put some elevation. And cork is super easy to climb, plus Shukaku can fit inside of the cork, so it acts as a hide as well as like a little escalator of sorts or a little bridge of sorts to get to the side of the enclosure. 
To blend it all in, I then added some dry sand all around, just sprinkled it on like a little bit of confetti or a little bit of like confectioner sugar on cake, if you will. But doing this kind of ties everything together instead of it just looking like stuff that sits on top of substrate. This kind of makes it look like it's all sand blown. And then after I did that with dry sand, I also did that with a bit of substrate. And then here is the final look. This is my new and improved Peter's Bandit Skink enclosure, which will not remain this way because my Peter's Bandit Skink redecorated it literally hours later when the lights were off, which you guys will get to see. So stay tuned for that. And you're also going to get to see Shukaku introduced into the enclosure right now. So there's Shukaku who made their way out of that little sand dish that I'd given them. And they were like, excuse me, where am I? And now they're like, also, excuse me, where am I? And they made quick business of burrowing into the substrate and getting away from me, which is very common behavior for a Peter's Banded Skink. Really quick, I want to mention, I am using a halogen heat bulb during the day. I'm also using that in combination with an Arcadia Shade Dweller to bring the temperatures up during the day. And then at night when the halogen goes off, the Arcadia Shade Dweller stays on just to provide some nighttime heat because the species does have high heat requirements. And then I also use an Arcadia UVB. You'll have to choose which UVB you want to use based on your enclosure. I will leave a link for that down below. And here you can see all of the work that Shukaku has put into what I like to call redecorating. This is it the next day as well. As you can see, I have to fill this water bowl every single day. Oh yeah, I forgot to mention the water bowl is also from Custom Reptile Habitats. I have to rinse out and fill this water dish every single day because Shukaku consistently buries it. Making a mess of their enclosure is very normal behavior for Shukaku, and one way that I fix it a little bit is to take a dry paintbrush that I haven't used for anything else, like I literally bought this paintbrush and it's only been used in this enclosure, and I just kind of, you know, move the substrate around. I feel a little bit like an archaeologist, it's very fun, but I just move the substrate around back into like places where I would want it. It doesn't have to be perfect, I just do it to kind of prevent Shukaku from moving too much of the substrate from one corner and then there not being any to burrow in anymore. As you can see, one of the nights that I was tidying up Shukaku's substrate, they were actually out in the background just watching me fix their house for them. <laughs> it's very cute. Also, you can see I had to lift the water dish because, again, that has to be done literally all the time because Shukaku always fills it with substrate. In fact, one of my favorite things when I'm like laying in bed at night because Shukaku is in my bedroom... I'm laying there and I can hear the sand particles and the substrate smacking against the wall of the enclosure because Shukaku flings it. I mean, it's not just like a nice little, oh, I'm making a burrow. It's like I am reconstructing and then just flings the substrate everywhere. So now I'm going to give Shukaku some dubia roaches, which is one of their favorite foods. And while you guys watch Shukaku eat, I'm going to close out the video. If you like this video, please let me know down below with a like and a comment. Also, please subscribe and consider following us on our various social media platforms, including TikTok, which is now our most followed platform, which is kind of crazy. I also recently welcomed home two animals. And if you're a patron or a channel member, that video should already be live for you. So a little bit of incentive if you want to know what they are consider joining. For everyone else, expect to meet them next Friday. Again, thank you all for watching, and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye! And a special thank you from me, Benjen, and the rest of the animals here at Discus Animal Friends to our patrons and channel members. Mm -hmm.